Hello and good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in and spending some time with me today. We made it to Friday. Are these weeks flying by or what? I can't believe how quickly this month is moving along. I really wanted to slow down. You know, I love summer. You are listening to the Financial Chick Show today, and I am the Financial Chick. My name is Denise Nostrom, the CEO and owner of Diversified Financial Solutions, a full-service independent financial planning firm located right in Medford. Your Financial Chick is here to help you make better financial decisions and choices to improve your life and reduce your anxiety and stress about money. If you want to know more about me or my firm, you can always check out my website at financialchickshow.com. We are also on Facebook and Instagram at Diversified Financial Solutions, so like our pages to get updates and see what is happening. So yeah, it's uh, already August 19th. I, I am not sure where July went, and now uh, we're over halfway through August. My mind is blown. Uh, my least favorite month is definitely September. It is interesting because I always loved school, so it has nothing to do with the idea of school starting again. But it represented to me, I guess into my, my head, the unofficial end of summer. I love summer and having the freedom to walk around in flip-flops, shorts, sleeveless shirts. Um, I love the idea of not having to put on a heavy jacket or wear boots. Um, although I do like winter attire, I'm not going to lie. There is some good outfits in the boots, or some of the boots are nice. But, um, you know, you just basically the summer you feel free, you feel unencumbered. Um, I don't mind being hot, but I really dislike being cold. So to me, it's the beginning of the darkness that will lead into the W word, which is winter. So now here in New York, summer um, goes in like a blink of an eye. It, it's, it comes and goes, and winter feels like it lasts for years. Uh, I'm such a drama queen. But, <laughs> but not to mention, um, one of the things that makes me sad is that my grandpa uh, died in the month of September uh, when I was 17. And this was really probably one of the first deaths that I ever experienced, and he was one of my favorite people in the world. Um, so, you know, that I'm sure that has something to do with it deep down inside. Um, now, it's not all bad because, yes, my kid goes back to school, so that's not such a terrible thing, right? No, all the kids go back to school. Actually, the kids are going back to school already, college and everything. But um, it's also my husband's birthday in the month of September. Um, so without this month, I would not have him. So, um, you know, I'm happy that, that, that September, that's a, a good part of September. Um, you know, the good news is that summer is still on, so I'm happy, and um, if all goes, goes well, we will have good weather through November, so I'm optimistic about that. And uh, just a few stats, because you know I'm a stat queen. Um, it's six weeks until the leaves start to start, uh, start falling, uh, 10 weeks until we have like those truly crisp mornings, and believe it or not, 14 weeks until Christmas. So that's made some of you real happy and maybe some of you not so happy. But listen, overall, life is really good. So, you know, when I, when I plan to do my show each week, I, you know, I kind of gather information as, as the week goes on. And um, so I have a few topics that, uh, that I, I was going to talk about. I actually had my nails done this morning with my nail girl, and she's always like my, my therapy. So I kind of, you know, test out a few things with her. But uh, so here's some of the things, and I don't want to be negative, but unfortunately, when we listen to the news and everything, a lot of things are, are not super positive at this point. So the first half of the show, I'll kind of rant a little bit, but then the second half of the show, I'm going to talk about milestones. But so the first thing that happened this week that was quite poignant um, was the um, Inflation Reduction Act that was passed. And uh, what's very, very interesting, and I just never understand, you know, why these things happen, but they're calling it IRA, because Inflation Retu Reduction Act. Now, you know, don't, do we want a financial situation, or financial stuff is confusing to begin with, but now do we want to blend the government bill to IRAs? But anyway, we have the Inflation Reduction Act, which, you know, if you look into it, there's a few parts, I guess, that are okay. Uh, most of it um, will not decrease inflation. Uh, it's basically a spending bill. Uh, but the most poignant part, which I find is very interesting, is the fact that they want to hire 87,000 IRS agents. Now, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess that, that this is the way that they're going to pay for the bill. But the most important part of this topic is that these said IRS agents that they're going to hire will need to be weaponized. They're going to have to have guns. So. I say to myself, well, a couple of things. You know, 
why do we, why does an IRS need uh, IRS agent need guns? Because unless it's like you know uh, drug lords or something like that. But the IRS agents, how is this bill? How is that going to help the average person like you and I? Well, it's going to pay for their 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 pet projects, but. Do these things directly come down to us? Like, you know, if I if I donate to, let's say, Angels of Long Island, uh, an organization that's pretty close to my heart, I know that they're feeding and they're they're clothing the local community or or buying uh, formula for our babies that can't don't have it available to them in, in this. But when we when we give money to the government, um, or when we when we we hire IRS agents, which are government employees, how is that really benefiting us? That's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that, okay, they were able to find money for IRS agents to now, and again, don't think that they're just going over the 400000 This is going to be for all of you. I mean, you know, if you have an accountant that's doing things that look, wow, I get money back every year, and you're not quite sure how that is because really you probably shouldn't, you better be real scared because this is going to be an interesting thing. They're not going, they're just going for anybody and any, anything. So, you know, you, you really want to uh, take some precautions there. But now they found the money for that, but now we have these shootings from time to time in schools and they can't find the money or ways to protect our children in the schools or maybe have maybe have an IRS agent with a gun in the schools. Hey, listen, I might have just had a breakthrough there. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't understand a lot of what that is all about, but I do know from a financial standpoint and being a financial advisor, uh, this is going to be an interesting thing. I mean, people that, that they, they, you know, when I talk to any client or any prospect that comes into my office, the biggest thing that they say is, I hate taxes. I don't want to pay too much taxes. If I do this investment, will I have to pay taxes? You know, again, we have to pay our, our, our share. You know, we need roads. We need, you know, different services. But the IRS agents coming in, and if, just remember the name Lois Lerner. Just go back to that. Look it up. It's a scary time. The other thing that was very interesting this week, uh, the CDC admits to screwing up the pandemic response. Quite interesting there. Um, you know, a lot of things that were happening and I had, you know, clients that come in this week and they're like, oh my God, you know, I was flying, I have my, my, my vacations and, 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 and my airplane, things are delayed, they're canceling. Well, let's, let's, let's ratchet back and let's think about why these things are happening right now. When the pandemic was happening, they were forcing people to take immunizations or vaccines, not immunizations, but vaccines for the pandemic. Now, again, regardless of how you feel for that, whether you do or you don't, many companies decided, especially in the airline industry, we had it in the medical field as well, nurses, that if you did not get vaccinated, you lost your job. So the unintended consequences here is that if you have people leave because they couldn't stay, you're going to have shortages. So it, it, it's really kind of interesting that now they're realizing that a lot of the decisions that they made probably weren't the right decisions. And unfortunately now we're dealing with all the fallout from that with having supply shortages, with having delays in airlines and all of these different things. Um, and one of the things today in New York that uh, they're going to be eliminating toy guns um, in, in the city, uh, New York City, this is something Hochul has decided to do. Um, now that again, very valiant, I guess, effort. But you know, the, the, and the reason they're getting rid of the toy guns is because they want to, you know, not have the, um, the shootings that are on and, and all of the violence that's going on in the city. But there isn't there so much more. Where do we look at the music that's out? Why don't we take a look at? Um, let's take a look at. You know, I, I just lost my whole train of thought with, with, with the music. Oh, the, the, the video games, the video games that are out there. These are all things that, you know, maybe the average person is not being um, not going to do terrible things because they watched or saw something. But a lot of people are not that strong. And I don't know the toy gun is really going to be the end all be all. But again, this is what's happening. Um, so, again, we're going to have the first half. That's my rank. Get, look at my, uh, uh, my website at financialchickshow.com. So stay tuned at the commercial breaks. We're going to talk about some milestones for financial planning.
I'm so cranky. It's been a really bad week. I'm like sick of everybody. <laughs> I felt that in my soul. Mm. It's just like, just when you think it can't get any uh, more interesting, it does. You know? Got about a minute and a half. Okay, okay thank you. So, how is everybody doing out there? Getting a little edgy, but uh, there's just some crazy things that has to be discussed. But thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you being here. I'm going to get my phone because I can't even see who's on here, which is weird. Hey Richie, hey Athena, thanks for being here. Hope you're both doing well. Athena, miss you, love you girl. here at the airport. There's just people milling around. It's very quiet. Probably those airline delays or cancellations. Welcome back. This is Denise Nostrom, the financial chick. My company is in Medford and you can reach me at 631-758-8691 or visit my website at financialchickshow.com. I'm here to help you on your financial journey. Over the years, things change and I'm here to help you navigate all of those changes. So welcome back after the break. Uh, so like I said, today we're going to talk about some milestone ages for financial planning. So these are common questions that I get all the time when uh, people come in and it's just usually like, you know, knee jerk, like, whoa, you know, I've just changed this age, turned this age. I know there's something I'm sh I should be doing. What should I be doing? So let's kind of talk about some of that. Um, now, I know many of you may have stopped counting your birthdays or perhaps you just may lie about your age. But when you work with me as your financial advisor, you'll have to disclose that information. But it's for your own good. And I promise to never share or reveal that information to anyone. But at different times of our lives, we have financial planning opportunities or to do's, things that we have to do. They are so important and will directly relate to the age um, that you want to retire. So let's jump into those milestones. We start at the ripe old age of, excuse me, of 50. Uh, well, I got nervous, I guess, because I'm over 50, right? Uh, but there's always a good time to get started. You don't have to be 50 or over um, to get started. The earlier you start, obviously, the better you are. So the first thing, what happens at 50? Well, you can contribute more to your retirement plans. So when you turn 50, you can contribute to your 401k or other retirement plans. So the number in 2022, the contribution limit is 20,500 for everybody, but you get an additional $6,500 catch-up contribution, uh, which brings you to 27,000. So you can put up to $27,000 away in 2022. And for IRAs or Roth IRAs, that number is 6,000 for the general populace. If you're over 50, brings you up to 7,000 for the year. And you know how much, if you've been listening to the show, how much I love Roth IRAs, everyone should have one. There are some limitations, but always call the office just to make sure, but a uh, great thing to have. Next, 59 and a half, anyone know what that one is? Well, that is when you have no penalty if you withdraw, withdraw fun, funds from your IRA. Now, this is not your 401k if you're still working, but it's your IRA. So at 59 and a half, you could take withdrawals without penalties although you will have to pay taxes based on the type of IRA that you have. Obviously, Roths are a little bit more tax uh, beneficial. Um, IRAs at that point typically are fully taxable, although there are some that aren't. Again, always call, we can't go over every piece of the puzzle, and that's why you know we think it's like surface and people think they can do this themselves. Uh, there's a lot to it. Um, but you know, typically at that point, you're going to um, have to pay taxes on your IRAs. 
Uh, but it's really a good time at 59 and a half to, do is to start creating that retirement plan for your, your future. What type of income are you going to need a uh, retirement income plan? So you may also at this point want to start consolidating your 401ks from previous employers um, or maybe IRAs. You may have IRAs in various different places. Doing so is going to make it easier to track and organize your investments. As you get older, obviously you want to kind of keep it simple, you know. Um, you know, it also enables you to um, work a little bit better with regard to asset allocation. If you have IRAs in different places, it's hard to really know if you're too heavy in one area, too conservative, too aggressive, or too heavy maybe in something like technology, uh, which would be your diversification. Um, and it's easy to rebalance. It's hard to rebalance when you have things in different areas. So you can do a rebalance, meaning that let's say you have 60, 40, you get 60 in stocks, 40 in, in bonds, and things get out of whack. You know, it's hard to rebalance um, when you're across different uh, companies and different strategies. And you know, you may even be able to reduce some fees. You know, each one of these, uh, you know, these accounts have fees. So, if in doubt, give my office a call, and we can take a look at that for you. Age 62, what happens there? Well, this is the time when you actually can start receiving Social Security. It's the first year that you start, can start receiving Social Security. Barring any disability, there are some exceptions to that too, but the average person can uh, do that. Now, of course, this will uh, reduce your monthly benefits by 30% versus waiting until your full, full retirement age of Social Security, and that would be when you're entitled to 100% your full retirement um, uh, age, and we'll go, to, go into that in a little bit, you know, what that is and what ages those are. Um, but you know, also, uh, if you take it early, there's no do-over, so it, it, it becomes a permanent reduction you know, in your Social Security income. So obviously, it's important to, uh, to talk to me uh, to help you make that decision. And um, you also may want to visit the Social Security website to get your uh, personalized retirement est estimates to see what you're going to get at those various ages, at 62, at um, your full retirement age. And they also give you uh, what you would get at age 70. And that's at ssa.gov, ssa.gov. Uh, and that's always a good thing when you go to see your financial advisor, you come to see me to bring that along with you. 65, what happens there? Well, you can finally sign up for Medicare. Um, you want to get the timing right. Medicare's initial enrollment period lasts for seven months. So it starts three months before you start, you turn 65, and it ends three months after you turn 65. And of course, you know, the month that you turn 65. So you don't want to miss that seven month initial enrollment period. Uh, otherwise, then you have to wait to sign up and you have to pay a late enrollment penalty and that you don't want to do. So 65 is a huge, huge uh, milestone and uh, super important. And again, if you have problems, come in. We, we help people sign up for Medicare. Uh, there's a lot of choices that you have to make if you still have your uh, health insurance or if you don't. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's, it's a biggie. So going back to that full retirement age, so uh, when does that typically happen? Well, it's a couple of ages. The first of which is age 66, but that's just for people that were born between the years 1943 and 1954. If you were born um, anytime after 1960, oh, and then of course between 1954 and, and, and 1960, you know, it's, it's 66 and two months, 66 and three. We have a grid in our office that can help you, or you can, you know, find it online. Um, so it gets a little. I just had a client come into the office this week, and um, his birthday's in May, and he's going, he turned 65. So in November, at 66 and six months, is when he can actually start. His um, his Social Security. So uh, you know now anybody born after 1960, uh, the full retirement age there is 67. Now again, the government's constantly talking about making some changes there too. But those are the ages that you really want to uh, hone in on at this point. Age 70, another biggie. Uh, Social Security benefit increases as a result of delaying retirement. Stop at age 70. So you can actually wait till 70 to take your Social Security. And every year that you wait um, from age 62 all the way to 70, you get an 8% increase. So depending on your situation, it may make sense to wait. You know, we have two schools of thought. Like I put my money in, I want to take it right away. But if you have longevity, it may not be the best decision. Um, you know, other people want to wait. They may be working. So it's very, very important to do planning and not knee jerk based on emotion because that just never works out so well. Um, 70 and a half or 72, this gets a little quirky too. 70 and a half used to be that magical number of when you had to start taking your required minimum distributions from your retirement assets. 
based on the um, the the, uh, the act that came during the pandemic, it's now 72 when RMDs start. So if any time after January 1st of 2020, it's age 72. And finally, age 73 and beyond. So according to MIT Age Lab, a division of MIT that studies aging, retirement tends to get more complex as we age. That's no a surprise, right? At this point, you're probably gonna wanna address things like housing decisions, driving a uh, car, th those challenges, maintaining friendships, caregiving, organizing your most important information, and you know having fun and continuing to have a purpose. Uh, so there's a lot, and you know people don't realize that you know they think financial advisors are just there for the money uh, or the investments, but we do a lot of this stuff, and uh, this is something that I work with my clients. And just this week, a lot of those things we talked about, they were stuff that that, that I had discussions with uh, with clients uh, just this week. So it's really really interesting. So um, I hope you got some good information there. Um, again, it's a lot, and if you have questions, I'm always here to answer. Uh, you can call my office or, or go to my website. Um, and one big thing, I've reached a milestone, which is very, very interesting. So this Sunday, which is August 21st, I will have been on the air for two years at LA News Radio. And it's very, very exciting. Um, the, the, the executive producer, David, had given me my, my little, I got a button that says LA News Radio. And, which is so exciting, my original engineer, Mike, Love you, Mike. Was here today also. So, so excited to have you run my show. And thank you so much for everything. You're always the best. So, um, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. I hope you have an awesome weekend. The weather's going to be perfect. Just a reminder, there's a primary on Tuesday, August 23rd. Get out there and have your say. Uh, going to be a crazy re re Republican primary in the Congressional District 1 where Lee Zeldin's going. So, let's hope the best person wins. Remember, do better, be better. I look forward to being with you again next Friday.